and I want to just say where one person can make a difference. I carry a very heavy burden in my life. I want you to know this. When I was 26 years old, I had the gall to run against a former economics professor of mine for Congress. I looked like I was about 16. When I was 26, I lost by 115 votes to a guy named Phil Graham. Have you ever heard that name? I don't want you to have the burden that I've felt since 1978. Although at least my credibility ought to be good. Everything I said about him turned out to be true. And that, yes, that is the America is a bunch of whiners and this is a psychological recession, Phil Graham. That's the guy. My point is this. If I had had a meeting like this on a Sunday afternoon like this, and, and this many people got one extra person to go to the polls. Phil Graham and Graham Latta that kicked millions of people out of health care and education and job training programs, that bill would have never, never become law. So you can make a difference in this room. Uh, I believe strongly enough in it that uh, I wanted to come here. And it takes a lot to get me away from my 11 and 12 year old sons and, and my wife. This is my first visit to do a campaign trip since I became chairman of the VA military construction subcommittee but it was an honor to, to have the chance to come here because I care so deeply about Carol Shea Porter her principles her ethics her passion for being a voice for all Americans not just a privileged few thank you for giving me the privilege to join with you and helping reelect her let's welcome your friend and our leader Carol Shea Porter Working right. How's that? Okay, I'll just get closer to it. Anyway, when I first got there, I realized that, you know, the Veterans Hospital's been closed for years now. It's a full service hospital. Nobody did anything about it. Why not? And what do I have to do to bring it back? And so I took a look down the list and said, who do I need to talk to? And I found Chet. And I went up to Chet and said, you are my new best friend. And he is your best friend, too because he works very, very hard for veterans. And he's worked with me. He has come to see what we're talking about. He knows our story. He's met with the veterans. And he's going to carry that story back to Washington. There's just no excuse for not having either full service hospital or equivalent care in your own community. congressmen and senators knew this and stayed silent. There's just no excuse, and I won't accept it. I am the squeaky wheel, and I know you are too, and if we keep making this noise, we will get their attention. Because if you signed up to serve your country from New Hampshire, why shouldn't you receive the same benefits as somebody who signed up from Massachusetts, or from Connecticut, or from Iowa? What's wrong with us? We deserve the same treatment. Now, before you think I'm wrong, Noble, remember this, that I was a military spouse, my husband's a veteran, I got a dog in the fight too. So we all have a dog in this fight, and let's make sure that we win it. It's as simple as that. So thank you for coming today and for helping us to win this race, because this is a race for the veterans. And to give you an idea of what it was like just a few short years ago, there was a Republican on the Veterans Committee, and he was the chairman. And he went and he dared to tell the Republican leadership that they weren't doing enough for veterans. And so you know what they did? They fired him. They took his chairmanship away. These are the stories that don't come home to New Hampshire, but they should. Because you need to know who's fighting for you and who's not. And it doesn't matter whether you have a R next to your registration or a D, because all veterans deserve quality care. We have to honor our commitments. And I checked with my husband, and when he signed his papers, he didn't check whether he was a Republican or a Democrat. He was an American going to serve his country. And so we cannot discriminate, and we cannot allow one party to hold back treatment and opportunity and honoring commitments to the veterans. We have to serve each other. It's our requirement. 
and we have a young generation who's watching. We need them. I sit on the Armed Services Committee. I will tell you right now, we have enemies around the world. We need people to sign up for the Armed Services, and we need them to look at how we treat our veterans and say, yes, I trust America that should I be wounded or should I be killed, they will take care of my family and they will take care of me. They won't break that sacred promise. And so the young are looking to see what we do right now, to see if we truly honor our commitments. And the answer here from me is yes, we do. We must. So I thank you for being part of that. You need to put your voices with all of ours. Don't let Washington turn its attention away from this issue. I have been, obviously, uh, quite a nudge down there. And I will tell you, there are very few members of Congress who do not now know that New Hampshire is the only state without a full-service hospital. So keep up the good work, and we will make sure that veterans today and tomorrow will have what we promised them yesterday. Thank you very much. Mike Lopez. Happy birthday, Mike. I won't, I won't embarrass him enough to say happy birthday to you. And thank you to all. And I, you know, you saw me run up and hug a certain somebody who is the MC here. And I have to tell you, I can't say enough about Jim Craig. You know as well as I do that he is one class act, isn't he? He truly is. to the mic and we have uh, somebody who's running for executive council, Bob Bruce, who also comes from the people and so I appreciate your uh, looking at his his record and his concern for all of us. I know his slogan goes along the line of send your neighbor and that's the best thing you can do. Send one of us and fill all these positions with somebody who knows your story because we are one of you. You know my slogan, running for the rest of us. So thank you for the honor of serving you in Washington, and I ask that you continue to do that, and you send Democrats up and down the ticket, because it's not the fact that we're Democrats, it's the fact that we're holding the American agenda right now. We're the, we're the party that has come together to say we've got to save the middle class, and we've got to fix the country. So we're holding the American agenda, and Democrats and other good people will be very well served by, by the Democrats in Washington and in New Hampshire. So thank you very much, and we'll see you all on the trip.